Chapter 19, Rockstar. As fate would have it, the last time I ever had the dream was early the morning of Friday, April 4th. That was the day of the concert, so it might have been nice to have slept well. But by the time I had showered the dream away and headed downstairs for breakfast, I was nervously hyper that there was no way a lack of sleep was going to slow me down. I would just have to crash on Saturday. My mom and Jeffrey were down in Philadelphia, but, there, but they were due to get back in time for a concert. My dad and I have never spoken again about this choice of not attending the concert, but I know my mom and he had had at least one discussion about it. The kind of discussion that rattles your teeth. That you can't help overhearing no matter how loud you crank your disc man. So that morning when she, when the issue was both on our minds, he and I didn't have a single safe word to say to each other. And the weird being so nervous and so quiet at the same time, but as soon as I got to school, the quiet part became a memory. Renee assaulted me in homeroom with a copy of the program in her hand. It was thicker than any school program I had ever seen with a beautiful glossy cover shot of the band on stage. When you opened the program, there was Jeffrey. His kindergarten photo was blown up nearly a full page size, and beneath it, there's a statement in neat black calligraphy. All proceeds from tonight's concert will benefit the Jeffrey Alpert Medical Trust. Simply unbelievable. Thanks to the amazing brains of two girls, Jeffrey had gone from being a regular little kid to a medical trust. I had to admit, despite this strangeness of the whole thing, Renee and Annette had done an incredible job with the whole project. When the honeymoon, when I'm sorry, <laughs> when the homeroom bell rang, Annette came rushing in to give me the latest totals in the box office receipts and the profits of the program's ad. As soon as she and Renee were standing together, I noticed they had really gotten, they had both gotten really short haircuts, really short haircuts. But when, but you know me by now, I chalked up to coincidence. Thanks to them for all their hard work, answered a few questions about Jeffrey, and then went to class. That day, Miss Palma, three tickets and a gigantic basket of cookies for the bake sale, was showing a movie based on the last book that we had read. So, of course, I spaced out completely. I couldn't even tell you what I thought about it, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't Homer's use of foreshadowing in the Odyssey. Mostly, I think, I practiced playing the all city songs in my head. Somehow between Miss Palma saying, please take note of the dramatic irony in this scene, and my brain saying, bip, boop, dip, dip, doo -dip -bop, I got through the whole class. The whole day was like that. But eventually, I even, even a Friday in middle school has to come to an end. The last bell rang and I started to head out to the bus. Then the intercom in Mr. Watchress's room buzzed and i got called to the office now that will put a lump in your throat right on the way there i alternated between running so i could find out the news fast and trudging so i wouldn't have to know either way my mind never slowed down for a second oh geez grandma fell and broke her hip oh god dad is here to kidnap me so we have can't be at the concert He'll probably set me up with a ride slide rule and pile of tax returns in some cheesy motel by the interstate. All he has to do is hold me about six hours and it will all be over. My hopes, my dreams, my big conga solo ruined. Plus, I hate math. And while these surfaces thought all in and while these surface thoughts were providing some distraction, I knew the only three tenths of this mental iceberg, the deadly part was hide, hidden below. It was all about Jeffrey. When I got there, my mom and brother were standing by the chairs where the bad kids sit while they were getting reamed out by the principal. 
my mom was chatting calmly with one of the secretaries while the other one was giving Jeffrey chocolates from a big jar on her desk. Naturally, I'd been going to that school for three years without being offered candy from that lady's desk, but whatever. Jeffrey spotted me right away. Steven, guess what? Today is your concert. Yeah, buddy, I know. What's going on? Are you, are you all right? Was your blood okay? I don't know. I'm only five. There was this clown in my hospital room today. He was pretty cool. He painted my face so I could be Spider-Man. I want a green Power Ranger, but the cloud said he didn't have enough green face paint. Isn't that weird? He wasn't such a prepared clown, I don't think. I needed some facts. I needed them pronto. Mom, don't interrupt, Stephen. Mom, is everything okay? Sure. Then why are you here? Why did you page me down here? Give me a heart attack. When you're on your, when we were on our way home, and thought you might be like to spend some time with your family on your big day. So we picked you up. Don't be so dramatic. I'm not being dramatic, Mom. I was worried. Well, worry no more. Your mom is on the scene, and everything is under control. Yeah, things can be completely out of hand before she stepped into the rescue me heroically from my long, painful bus ride with Annette and Renee. Thanks for the thought, Mom. But, you know, I am entitled to a complimentary bus ride home at taxpayer expense, and I hate to disappoint the taxpayers, so I'll just be on my way then. Stephen, wait, I want to see you. I missed you. They did the spinal tap. It was scary. <sighs> Sigh. So long, my girls. Hello, my boy. On the way home, my mother briefed me about Jeffrey's treatment. He counts, his counts still didn't look good. Dr. Moreau and Dr. Moreau's, Moses had almost kept him in the hospital for a few, another few days. But when my mom told him about the doctor about the big concert, he agreed to discharge Jeffrey with specific, with another specific warning to rush to the ER if anything didn't seem right. I was grateful to my mom for going to bat for about this. With my dad refusing to attend, my 15 minutes of fame would have been pretty lonely without her and Jeffrey. I mean, I would still have known like half the audience and my grandparents weren't going to miss this for anything, but still, it was nice to know that they have a couple of relatives there who didn't need to chug a can of Geritol to stay awake for the whole performance. For this part, for his part, Jeffrey didn't seem did seem kind of wiped out. On the other hand, he was also definitely all psyched up to see me play. My mom had explained to him the concert was going to raise money for his treatment, so he sh should thank people for coming. That he should behave himself like a gentleman, blah blah blah. But he hadn't been particularly interested in any of that. His big goal, big goal for the evening was to shout, yay, Stephen, that's my brother, every time I hit a drum. Back at the house, we still had about half an hour to kill, an hour and a half to kill, before I was supposed to be at the high school. I was a madman. I paced back and forth in my room, laying out, refolding, and double-checking my clothes, all city band t-shirts and the black jeans, as if there was any way to screw that up, putting on the uniform. Then I stalked downstairs to the kitchen and laid out three different snack cakes, agonizing over which one would provide the best musical energy boost. Well, the chocolate-covered, chocolate-filled chocolate donut provides you with sugar and caffeine, yet the vanilla snack cake is even sweeter for that quick burst of power. And that classical apple pie, classic apple pie, is the individual wrapped in wax paper for freshness and probably provides traces of at least one vitamin. In the end, my mother walked in and insisted I eat yogurt as if that were food. I knew the band would be having a traditional post-concert pizza delivery to the, dress, to the rehearsal room, but honestly, was I supposed to survive on nothing but bacteria-laden milk salads for the next several hours? I a compromise was reached, and I please and I was pleased to report the vanilla yogurt makes quite an edible topping for apple pie. I bounced around the house, trying not to wake Jeffrey, who had dozed off in the living room couch. 
I read Modern Drummer Magazine for five minute stretches. In between, I paced some more. Occasionally, I peeked out the front windows and hoped that my father had changed his mind and was at the very at at the very moment pulling into the house. But who was I kidding? The time crawled by like a tortoise with arthritis. But finally, the clock struck. Clock said five seventeen, and a time to roll out. I shouted for my mom. Woke Jeff up. Woke Jeffrey up. Ran upstairs. Changed my concert clothes. Put on my shoes. And was standing by the door to the garage by five nineteen, chanting, "Let's go! Come on!" Feel free to try that at home, by the way. Mom loves it. I practically hurled Jeffrey into his booster seat and dove headlong into the car after him. I was in the mood to peel out, burn rubber, lay the pedal to the metal. I wanted my mom to skid her way to the concert, like maybe could get pulled over for speeding. My mom could tell the officer, but mom, sir, but sir, you don't understand who's in the back seat. That's Stephen Elper, the second drummer for the All City Jazz Band. His concert starts in less than an hour. Then the cop would dash back to his car, call headquarters, and get us a motorcycle escort to the high school. Or my mom could just put there at a usual 31 miles an hour while Jeffrey and I bounced and chatted in the back seat like two bald monkeys on sugar high. Either way, I suppose we wound up at the school. Jeffrey insisted on coming with me into the band room, which was his right since the concert was for him. When we entered, I almost had a heart attack. Every single member of the band was wearing the matching red baseball cap. Did I miss a memo or something? Had I screwed up my uniform after all? My mom looked at me. I looked at my mom. Jeffrey ran around the room, oblivious. And then somebody spoke. It was Biff of all people. Jeffrey, I have something to tell you. We, the members of the All City Jazz Ensemble, would like to present you with a gift in honor of your courage and your good cheer, an inspiration you give to all of us. Well, that was laying it on with a trowel, but okay, he had our interest anyway. So Jeffrey, we hereby proclaim you to be an honorary member of the band. It is my pleasure to give you this official All City t-shirt and this very special All City baseball cap. He took off his own cap to, to give it to Jeffrey. Underneath it, he was bald. Biff had shaped his head in tribute to my brother, just as I started to get a mental grasp with on this, everyone else reached for their hats too. At a signal from Annette, who was standing with Renee by the piano, they all whipped off their hats as well. My mom was the only person in the room with hair long enough to comb. I flashed back to Annette and Renee matching super short dues, and suddenly it all made sense. Suddenly, too, I had a huge lump in my throat. Jeffrey was running all over the room, hugging everyone, rubbing players' heads, and for good luck, and my mom was standing there too, next to Mr. Watress, whose natural baldness had excused him from the pre-show razor festivities. There were unquestionably tears welling up in her eyes, but she also looked happy. Honestly, when I saw that look on my mom's face, I practically ran over to Biff and hugged him myself. We hung out for a while. While we hung out for a while, Jeffrey ran up to me and buried his head in my stomach. I sort of wrestled free. He looked up at me and with his eyes and whispered, you're the best drummer in the world. Then my mom started walking out with him to find their reserves, their seat, reserved front and center seats in the auditorium. When she pulled open the door, my dad almost fell into the room. He had made it after all. When he saw the room full of bare scalps though, he immediately got a grim facial expression. He gave me a little half wave, mumbled, good luck, and wheeled right back around to re lead my mom and Jeffrey to their seats.